Hello, everyone. Welcome to MCQ discussion series with me, Sanjay Dekshit. Uh, as usual, I'll be dealing with MCQs in pharmacology. And the topic that we'll be discussing today is penicillins and related antibiotics. Which of the following statements concerning penicillin V is true? It is indicated for minor infections. Penicillin V is given IV. Its bioavailability is relatively high. It is a broad spectrum penicillin. Okay, out here, all others are false, right? So it is indicated for minor infections is true out here. Penicillin V is a narrow spectrum antibiotic and it is used to treat mild to moderate infections caused by susceptible bacteria. It is a natural pen penicillin antibiotic that is administered orally. Because of poor oral bioavailability, it is given up to four times daily. It's also known as phenoxymethyl penicillin or penicillin V or penicillin VK. K is standing for potassium out here. Okay, so all oral penicillins should be given one to two hours before or after meal to minimize binding to food proteins and acid inactivation. Which of the following is an oral penicillin that can be given without regards to meals? Penicillin Z, naphthalin, amoxicillin, fluxacillin. Here, penicillin G and naphthalin are both given as parenteral drugs, right? And amoxicillin and cloxacillin, they can be given orally. However, cloxacillin should also be given with regards to meal so as to increase its absorption. And that leaves behind amoxicillin. So amoxicillin is the answer out here. Amoxicillin is the penicillin that can be given with food or before or after meals. Penicillin V or phenoxybenzyl penicillin is another drug from the group that can be given safely without any regards to food. Penicillin Z and naphthalin are both given IV and fluxacillin should be given before or after meals. Okay, which of the following is a cell membrane active bactericidal product obtained from Streptomyces roseosporus? Also note that the drug shows Activity against vancomycin resistant strains of enterococci and strafaureus. The options are phacoplanin, daptomycin, bacitracin, phosphomycin. So there are two cues out here, right? One is it is a natural product obtained from Streptomyces roseosporus. It's also bactericidal and that it has activity against vancomycin resistant strains of enterococci and staph aureus. So the drug out here is daptomycin. Daptomycin is novel cyclic lipo lipopeptide fermentation product of streptomyces roseosporus. Its spectrum of activity is similar to that of vancomycin, except that it may be active against vancomycin resistant strains of streptococci and staph aureus. In vitro, it has more rapid bactericidal activity than vancomycin. It binds to the cell membrane and cell membrane via uh, calcium dependent insert insertion of its lipid tail, resulting in depolarization of cell membrane with potassium efflux and rapid cell death. This is the question is taken from Calcium Pharmacology, a 14th edition, developed from page 810. Okay, so which of the following, which of the statements concerning vancomycin is accurate? A, it is known to inhibit transpeptidation. B, it causes release of histamine. C, it is a bacteriostatic drug. D, it has high oral bioavailability. Though vancomycin falls in the group of Cell wall inhibitors, quite like beta lactams, they do not inhibit transpeptidation. It is a highly bactericidal drug, and the oral bioavailability of the drug vancomycin is relatively low. So the answer out here is it causes release of histamine. Because it causes release of excessive histamine, that is why it leads to a syndrome called Redman syndrome. Right? So the answer out here, it causes release of histamine. 
Vancomycin is a bactericidal glycoprotein. It inhibits cell wall synthesis, but does not bind to penicillin binding proteins and is not susceptible to beta lactamases. It is not absorbed after oral administration and is used by this route for the treatment of colitis caused by Clostridium difficile and Staphylococci. It undergoes renal elimination and inhibits transglycosylase chains. Transglycosylation. Vancomycin is known to elicit the red man syndrome. The infusion related flushing is caused by the release of histamine. It can be largely prevented by prolonging the infusion period to one to two hours or pre treatment with antihistamines such as diphenhydramine. This question is also developed from Cadsen Pharmacology, 14th edition, page number 800. Okay, the question says. A 36-year-old woman recently treated for breast cancer is admitted to the hospital with malaise, chills, and high fever. A blood culture reveals the presence of gram-negative bacilli. The initial diagnosis is bacteremia and parenteral antibiotics are indicated. The patient medication records, however, reveal that she had severe urticaria rash, hypertension, and respiratory difficulty after oral penicillin V about six months back. The most appropriate dr drug regimen for empiric Treatment is decarcelin plus clavulanic acid, ceftriaxone, meropenem, astronam. So here we need a antibiotic that can be able. To, so here we need an antibiotic that is able to treat the gram negative bacilli that has led to bacteremia, right? And another thing that we need to consider is that C had an allergic response to penicillin V uh, six months back. So we need to be able to choose a drug that does not el elicit the allergic response in the very patient. What we understand is that beta lactams and even cephalosporins, they share the hypersensitivity to some extent, right? If someone is hypersensitive to one penicillin, there may be cross-reactivity seen with another penicillin group, and the cross-reactivity may even extend to cephalosporins. However, it is less seen with, however, the cross-reactivity is seen the less with, with monobactams like astronam. So the answer out here is astronam. So all of the drugs that are listed here has activity for gram negative bacilli. All the penicillins should be avoided in patients with allergic reactions to individual penicillin drug and cephalosporins should also be avoided in patients who have had anaphylaxis or other hypersensitivity reactions to penicillin. There is a partial cross-reactivity between penicillins and carbapenem such as ibipenem and meropenem, but no cross-reactivity has been seen between penicillins and astronam. Therefore, the drug of choice out here is astronam. A patient needs antibiotic treatment for infective enterococcal endocarditis. He had a severe anaphylactic reaction to penicillin Z during last year. The best approach would be treatment with piperacillin, astronam, amoxicillin, clavulinate, vancomycin. So the answer out here is vancomycin. Let us have a look. In patients who have a history of severe reaction to penicillin, it is not advisable to administer cephalosporin or carbapenem. Astronam has no significant activity against gram-positive cocci, so the logical treatment in these cases is vancomycin, often with aminoglycoside like gentamicin for synergistic activity against enterococci. The cephalosporin drug ceftilozan is used in combination with beta-lactamase inhibitor tazobactam. Which penicillin drug is used in combination with tazobactam? Ticarcillin, nafcillin, ampicillin, piperacillin. So here we are looking for a penicillin drug that can be used with beta lactamase inhibitor tazobactam. Right? So the answer out here is piperacillin. Piperacillin and tazobactam make the combination. Piperacillin tazobactam is a beta lactam beta lactamase inhibitor with coverage against gram-negative organisms, including Pseudomonas aeruginosa, gram-positive organisms, and anaerobic bacterial organisms. Pseudomonas aeruginosa is gram-negative non-lactose fermenting rod that is resistant to multiple agents, and infections caused by this pathogen can be very difficult to treat. So few drugs have reliable activity against the, this pathogen. Piperacillin tazobactam is one of the agents. It is appropriate 
for the uh, piperacillin tazobactam is one of these agents and it's appropriate to use is essential for decreasing the development of resistance in pseudomonas aeruginosa. Which of the following statement is false about extended spectrum beta lactamase or ESBL? Carbapenems are sensitive to ESBL. These can hydrolyze penicillin, cephalosporins, as well as monobactams. Amber classification of ESBL is based on structural differences. Third and fourth generation cephalosporins are used for detection of ESBL. So we are looking for a false statement out here, right? So carbapenems are sensitive to ESBL is the false statement. ESBL refers to subset of beta lactamases that hydrolyze penicillin, cephalosporins, monobactams, while cephamycins and carb uh, carbapenems are relati relatively stable. So carbapenems are considered the established therapeutic options for severe infections caused by ESBL producing organisms. Carbapenems have been considered the gold standard treatment for treatment of ESBLP and have been associated with improved outcomes even when in vitro activity to other beta lactams is exhibited. The piperacillin tazobactam among non carbapenem beta lactam represents the alternative to carbapenems in the treatment of infections caused by ESBLP as well as for deescalating carbapenems. Beta-lactams are the most widely used class of antibiotics. All beta-lactam compounds are so named because of their four-membered lactam ring. Uh, identify the beta-lactam drug from among the given drugs. Clindamycin, amikacin, tazobactam, vancomycin. Clindamycin out here is lincomycins, right? Amikacin is an aminoglycoside. Tazobactam, it's a beta lactamase inhibitor. And uh, vancomycin is a non beta lactam cell wall inhibitor. Sorry. So that lives behind tazobactam. Tazobactam is a monolactams. Okay. Beta lactamases are enzymes that degrade beta lactam ring. Beta lactamases hydrolyze the cyclic amide bond in response in susceptible beta lactam molecules so that antibiotics are able to bind to penicillin binding proteins. In gram negative bacteria, beta lactamases are intracellular with a periplasmic location, whereas in gram positive bacteria, they are mainly excreted from cell and are extracellular. Which of the following is a potent inducer of beta lactamase production? Imipenem, clavulanic acid, piperacillin, sulbactam. Out here, clavulanic acid and sulbactam, these are both inhibitors of beta lactamase, right? Piperacillin is susceptible to it, so that lives behind imipenem, which is an inducer of beta lactamase. Beta lactam antibiotics such as imipenem, cefoxetin, and ampicillin, they are potent inducers of beta lactamase production. Clavulanic acid and sulbactam, they are both beta lactamase inhibitors. Piperacillin, on the other hand, is antibiotic susceptible to beta lactamase. The first anti staphylococcal penicillin to be developed, which has been discontinued for its clinical use due to high rates of adverse effects nafcillin, dicloxacillin, metacillin, oxacillin. Here, all of the listed drugs are anti staphylococcal penicillins, right? Nevertheless, the first drug to be developed is methicillin. Methicillin was developed in 1960, and all the others followed. Methicillin has been discontinued in the United States. So, cloxacillin, dicloxacillin, nafcillin, oxacillin, they all belong to the family of anti staphylococcal penicillin.
one of the drugs listed below in the treatment of UTIs and prostatitis in male patients. It inhibits a very large stage of bacterial cell wall synthesis after, sorry. Uh, one of the drugs listed below is used in the treatment of UTIs and prostatitis in male patients. It inhibits a very early stage of bacterial cell wall synthesis after being transported into the bacterial cell by glycerophosphate or glucose 6-phosphate transport systems. Identify the drug. Daptomycin, phosphomycin, clindamycin, bacitracin. So the cues out here are used in treatment of UTIs and prostatitis in male patients, right? Also, it inhibits very early stages of bacterial cell wall synthesis. And it needs to be transported into the bacterial cell by glycerophosphate or glucose 6-phosphate transport systems. So the drug out here is phosphomycin. Phosphomycin is an analog of phosphoenol pyruvate. It is structurally unrelated to any other antimicrobial agent. It inhibits the cytoplasmic enzyme enol pyruvate transferase by covalently binding to the cysteine residue of the active site and blocking the addition of phosphoenol pyruvate to UDP and N-acetyl glucosamine. The reaction is the first step in the formation of UDP and acetyl muramic acid, the precursor of N acetyl muramic acid, which is found only in bacterial cell walls. Hence the selective toxicity. Which of the following beta lactam antibiotics can be safely used in a patient with history of allergy to penicillin? We have talked about beta lactam antibiotics, the hypersensitivity, and the list level of hypersensitivity seen with monobactams, right? So the answer out here is astronam. The allergic reactions are most common with penicillins, ampicillin, penicillin G, and cephalosporins, and minimal acti reactivity is seen with monobactams like astronam. Identify the cell wall inhibitor antimicrobial agent, which is active against gram-positive microorganisms and is used only topically for the treatment of mixed bacterial infections in skin and mucous membrane. Cycloserine, tacoplanin, phosphomycin, bacitracin. So here we are talking about cell wall inhibitor that it has got active against gram-positive microorganisms. And again, it is used for the treatment of mixed bacterial infections of skin and mucous membrane. So the option out here is bacitracin. Bacitracin is a cyclic peptide mixture first obtained from TSC stainer bacillus subtilis in 1943. It inhibits cell wall formation by interfering with dephosphorylation in cycling of the lipid layer that transfers peptidoglycan subunits into the growing cell wall. There is no cross resistance between bacitracin and other antimicrobial drugs. It is used only topically because it is highly nephrotoxic. Which of the following is a glycopeptide antibiotic that is similar to vancomycin in mechanism of action and antimicrobial spectrum? Tacoplanin, bacitracin, clindamycin, lincomycin. Here we are looking for a glycopeptide antibiotic, right? And it is similar to vancomycin in mechanism of action and antimicrobial spectrum. So the drug out here is tacoplanin. Tacoplanin is the glycopeptide antibiotic that is similar to vancomycin in mechanism of action and antimicrobial spectrum. It has got long half-life of 40, 45 to 72 hours and permits once daily dosing. It can be given both IV or IM. Dal Dalbavancin and oritavancin are semi-synthetic lipoglycopeptides uh, lipo further derived from tacoplanin. Uh, Telavancin is another semi-synthetic lipoglycopeptide derived from vancomycin. The extended spectrum penicillins have greater activity against penicillin G than penicillin G against gram-negative bacteria because of the enhanced ability to penetrate the gram-negative outer membrane. However, like penicillin G, they are inactivated by many beta lactamases. Which of the following is an extended spectrum penicillin? Oxacillin, penicillin V, solbactam, ampicillin. Oxacillin, which is it's an anti-staphylococcal penicillin, right? Penicillin V or phenoxybenzyl penicillin is the oral kind of penicillin. 
from quite similar to penicillin G. Sulbactam is the beta lactamase inhibitor. So that lives behind ampicillin, which is an extended spectrum penicillin belonging to amino penicillin group. Amino penicillins, carboxy, uh, carboxy penicillin and ureta penicillins comprise the extended spectrum penicillins and ampicillin from amino penicillin is the answer here. So amino, in amino penicillins, ampicillin and amoxicillin are there. In carboxy penicillins, carb uh, carbonicillin and picarcillin are there. In ureta penicillin, piperacillin is there. So any of this could have been an answer if they were listed in the question. The drug piperacillin should not be combined with ampicillin in therapy because A, piperacillin is a broad spectrum beta lactam antibiotic of ureta penicillin plus. B, bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs should not be combined. C, they both belong to penicillin group. D, ampicillin is important beta lactamase inducer. Here, all the statements given are true, right? But however, you are looking for the statement that matches with the question given. So what is the reason why ampicillin and piperacillin are not combined? We had come across this kind of question earlier as well, right? Where imipenem was known to induce beta lactamase. Similarly, with this imipenem, the another drug that was listed is ampicillin. So ampicillin being a potent beta lactamase inhibitor, it is not given along with piperacillin. So imipenem, cefoxetine, and ampicillin, they are potent inducers of beta lactamase production. And uh, piperacillin being the susceptible to beta lactamase, it's, they are not given together. A 19 year old male with skin and soft tissue infections, noted minor boils or abscess in his legs, came to your OPD. It was found to be caused by penicillinase producing Staph aureus. Which of the following antibiotics would you prescribe for the patient? Ampicillin, nafcillin, amoxicillin, flavlenic acid. So here we are talking about penicillinase producing Staph aureus, right? So we need anti staphylococcal penicillin. So which one is it? It is nafcillin. So nafcillin here is a drug of choice. The semi-synthetic penicillins like penicillin, nafcillin, isooxazyl penicillins like cloxacillin and dicocloxacillin, they are indicated for infections caused by beta lactamase producing staphylococcal infections. Uh, they are the drugs of choice for methicillin susceptible and penicillin resistant strains of staphylococci. ESBL producing bacteria, enterobacteria C are a common cause of bacteremia in endemic countries and may be associated with high mortality. Which of the following antimicrobial is effective against organism producing extended spectrum beta lactamase? Ceftriaxone, amoxicillin clavulanic acid, piperacillin tazobactam, or cefepim? When it comes to treating the ESBL producing organisms, carbapenems are the first choice drugs over Piperacillin tazobactam that is given out here is also used. So ESBL are a subset of beta lactamases that hydrolyze penicillin, cephalosporins, and monobactams, while, while cephamycins and carbapenems are stable. Uh, beta lactam, beta lactamase inhibitors have shown to have variable activity against ESBL producers. Carbapenems are considered the drug of choice. However, piperacillin tazobactam can be equally effective. Which of the following statements about beta lactam antibiotics is most correct? Instability of penicillin in gastric acid does not limit their oral absorption. Ceftriaxone and nafcillin are both eliminated by biliary excretion. Cefoxetine and other second generation cephalosporins cross the blood brain barrier. Renal tubular reabsorption of amoxicillin is inhibited by probenicid. We are looking for the most correct answer out here, right? Yeah, penicillins are not stable in gastric acid, right? So, however, they limit. This is the this is the reason why the oral absorption of penicillins are limited. Cefoxetine and other second generation cephalosporins they do not cross the blood brain barrier, and renal tubular secretion of amoxicillin is inhibited by probenicid. So that leaves behind. Ceftriaxone and amoxicillin are both eliminated mainly by biliary secretion. 
uh, this is the reason why the, the dosage adjustment is not required in case of kidney failure. Okay, let's move to another question. A 18 year old female patient is diagnosed with sinusitis requiring amoxicillin. The primary mechanism of the antibacterial action of amoxicillin involves inhibition of peptidoglycan cross linking, beta lactamases, cell membrane synthesis, and acetylmuramic acid synthesis. So, amoxicillin is a drug from penicillin group, right? So, what you know is that the mechanism of action involves inhibition of peptidoglycan cross linking. Penicillins and cephalosporins, they bind to penicillin binding proteins acting at the transpeptidation stage of cell wall synthesis to inhibit the peptidoglycan cross linking. Identify the antibiotic that inhibits many gram negative positive and gram negative organisms, but is used almost exclusively to treat tuberculosis caused by strains of Mycobacterium tuberculosis resistant to first line agents. Eicoplanin, phosphomycin, cyclosarin, bacitracin. So if you remember something from the Mycobacterium tuberculosis treatment, right? You remember that the second line agent that is used in Mycobacterium tuberculosis is cyclosarin. So this is the drug out here, cyclosarin. Though it is effective for many gram-positive and gram-negative organisms, it is selectively used in case of resistant tuberculosis. Okay, that is all for today. So keep tuned for more MCQ discussion series. And if you like this MCQ discussion, do look at other MCQ discussion series too. Thank you. That's all for today. Have a nice day.